of terror, mm -hmm. not on terror. <laughs> However, we go much deeper. Uh, we, we believe that the financial, the global financial system, uh, it, it is um, perhaps the root cause uh, because it's linked to uh, warfare, the military industrial complex. Sorry, was that a question? Yeah, or I hear myself. Okay, um, so, so yes, um, so yes, I, I, I'm very pleased that this movement, I remember writing on their forum, what, six years ago to, you know, go beyond a single issue, to have a holistic perspective on, uh, on, on, on the problems that we are facing. So um, today, definitely Global Vision is pleased to be here. Uh, and in our slogan is moving towards the, glo uh, the, the universal paradigm shift. It's happening with the revolutions just starting in the Muslim world, breaking away from the Sykes-Picot Agreement 1916 with the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. The Muslim people are awakening. I wouldn't say Arab people. Is that, is it, they are Islamic awakenings because the Arab peoples who have now instigated democratic moves are voting for Islamic parties. That is a fact. So there is a global Islamic awakening. It's only a beginning. And, uh, um, so, so, and also even in the West, the young people in particular are, are occupying places, the public space. So it's a global awakening going on, especially in the Muslim camp and parts of Europe and America. Um, well, uh, the website is globalvision2000.com. We do have a radical but a holistic perspective for a global moral political economy. We've got to have a shared view of where we're going. It's okay saying it's a satanic system, but what are you going to do about it? We need a holistic analysis, not single issues. Um, and also, I think it has to be quite pragmatic. It will be a transition. And that's why we talk about nothing new, moving towards the universal paradigm shift. Um, also, in terms of the crash, uh, since 1772, we have had 17 major crashes. So this is nothing unusual. However, what was missing in that analysis was the Muslim perspective on money. Money is not a commodity. That is one of the sickness of a destructive, um, uh, defunct, dysfunctional system. Everything is commoditized, yeah? Women, land, money, everything's got a price to the highest bidder. Well, money shouldn't have a price, friends. It is a means of exchange like air. No one has the right to hijack, that word wasn't used, hijack the money supply globally or locally, because that will suffocate the people. No wonder some bankers with conscience like Goldman Sachs recently, one guy jumped out the window, not literally, but he vomited at the callous behavior this week uh, in Goldman Sachs. Yeah, you know, the callous behavior. And, and we have now, you are seeing the true nature of this crash, a, 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 Bangkok, a Bankopolis, a banker's government. Who, who's taken control of Greece? Who's taken control of uh, the European Central Bank? Monty Draghi, <coughs> some like uh, Star Trek's people. Uh, but uh, th these are ex Goldman Sachs people, including in, uh, the Potomac and Wall Street. And so, Italy. Italy. Yes, definitely, yeah. Monty, Papa, Domi, whatever they call them. Uh, and Draghi. So, so anyway, basically I was saying 17 crashes. Point is, the, the point of usury, what Muslims call usury, compound interest, any percentage it, it, it is uh, got to be addressed. We, we've been so brainwashed to accept the fact that money has a price. No wonder everyone will fall into debt. <clears throat> so, uh, and uh, I'll mention that point, Islam prohibits usury because it is a cause of expansionary boom-bust credit cycles. That was mentioned up there. Uh, uh, and uh, it encourages the real economy, the Islamic economy, debt-free, interest-free, um, over the relatively unstable financial uh, debt-based usurious economy. It encourages a sharing risk of loss. Now, leaving aside all these bits and pieces, no one's talked about the solution. We've got to have a jubilee, right? The train's going over the cliffs of Dover globally, yeah? You've got to cancel the debt, right? 
let, 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 let's take the, you know, Gold Valley Horn. It's okay talking about banks, this, banks, that. There's an emergency out there, a global emergency. We've got to cancel all these debts. Cancel the age of austerity. And, and yes. Point, can I just, I realize I'm cutting in. You want to say something about too quickly? Yeah, I was just asking a question, really. Um, yeah, you're saying the money is not a commodity. Uh, I say the money is a commodity. It's a tool of trade. When I give you a cup of tea, you might get uh, 50 pence in return for it. I am getting a commodity that I can then trade with someone else for the goods and services that they have to offer. To say that it's not a commodity, what is it? All right, well, it's a means of exchange. Yeah, but if it's, it's a means of exchange. Yeah, but who, who, so, who, yeah. who creates the 50p? And where, where <coughs> you the 50p from? Look, can I just say yes. that no. money is a social fact. Yes. It is not an individual fact. No. And that does not seem to be understood by the people up there. No, no, it, it is a social fact. It only exists if we believe it does. Absolutely. And the moment we don't, it doesn't exist. It doesn't get taken by someone. It disappears. Right, yeah, now listen, I'm very aware that there are lots of people who want to ask questions here. But no, we've now actually no, got Max Kaiser on the line. Okay? Oh. So we're going to have Max Kaiser now. Then I'm going to come to Peter next. As we, uh, because he hasn't spoken. Max, then we'll get everybody in, OK? And we'll get the questions. <laughs> Okay, so Max, here we go. Max, come here. Can everyone else hear you? No. Hold on, look. We're just getting you on.